Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Token Games Podcast. I'm your host and sometimes referee, impatiently waiting for Devil May Cry 5, Zach Stat Pearson. And today I'm joined by the officer who always puts people in jail or their living room closet if they don't remember to put their shit on push to talks, a 1 9001. Which means I wasn't implying it was you. And of course, we have future voice actor and giant titan extraordinaire, Troy of House Freeman. What's going on? Many, many things, according to Electronic Arts. All right, so let's get into the topics. First topic is... uh, Anthem continuing to, for lack of a better term, blow its load. But this time it's blowing its load so hard, it's bricking systems, specifically of the Sony variety. An update has come into play, or at least a bug in general, that perpetually makes the system cycle between booting as well as bricking the console. So far, Sony has gone out of their way to give players a refund on their title, which Obviously, that's the equivalent of trying to put out a fire with dog piss. Yet, we have yet to see any type of statement given from Electronic Arts who produced this title as to what they plan to do for any form of reparations. But, hey, it's EA. We know how this might go. And if you don't, that's okay. Officer going to tell you very, very soon. Now, our first topic is Captain Chaos. Hey, everyone else is touching on it. You know we kind of had to, but we're not going after Brie Larson in particular. Captain Marvel debacle is very simple. Excuse me. (coughs) 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 Sorry, don't like coughing in the mic. Although this issue is one that doesn't necessarily follow a consistent logic, it has some unusual effects on media. The interest has dramatically diminished due to Brie Larson's as Captain Marvel and her continuous ironically divisive statements. However, since then, various media outlets have reported that the movie is being review bombed, even though it hasn't come out yet. However, most notably, is that Rotten Tomatoes specifically got involved. They specifically got involved, even though this has been happening for years on their platform with Captain Marvel. So my question to you guys is, do you think that Disney is spending their money to try and fix the public perception and image of Captain Marvel? Or do you think that places like Rotten Tomato have been implementing this technique because it was long overdue? Topic two, one of my personal favorites, buyer beware culture. It's recently become a bit of a pariah to the multi-million dollar conglomerate and corporations of the world, by which I mean Owners, well, excuse me, owners have been warning potential consumers and fellow consumers about products dangerously underestimating and being undersold on their issues throughout popular media and journalism, especially those with no integrity, as well as abuse through technological algorithms, by which I mean YouTube trying to claim comp- content IDs, owner views that, you know, look at a game or a subject matter negatively. Do you think that there's a way to stop companies from getting away with these things? Or is there anywhere on the internet you would consider, for lack of a better term, a safe space for people to give unbiased criticisms? Topic three. The time has come, almost. And so have I, once I've seen a pretty decent porn at some point in time. Devil May Cry 5 release window is practically non-existent we have three days left and i impatiently randomly stare at my own system waiting for the pre-download to start so with that being said i'm curious what you players who've played the games before or hell if you haven't what your final predictions are in the case of virgil do you think that he's just the final boss or do you think he's just the final boss and playable Or, you know, it being Capcom, 
what we want will be in DLC instead of, you know, built in that sort of a thing. Of course, you don't have to do that if you have no interest in Devil May Cry. And then at that point, we'll just bullshit for 15 minutes to fill time. <laughs> uh, it'll be a first, but hey, you know, stalling is no different from bullshitting. So in that regard, this ain't the first time we've done this. All right, officer, go ahead and lay some pipe in EA. Oh, EA, you truly never, ever learn. You could have spent maybe another six months working on this game, making sure it would work properly, but instead, you go and release a game that... At least according to this Reddit post, uh, all these people reporting these various issues they're having. Oh yeah, it, it's a software side problem. The software is causing some kind of bug with the programming and <laughs> council goes, uh, oh, oh god, I don't know what to do, and force shuts it down. Which, that happens too much, uh, yeah, your PS4 is going to be bricked. And at least from what I'm seeing, only one person thus far. No, it's game. over a dozen. Oh, really? Said that before we started. Uh, admittedly, I haven't gotten far in the thread I'm only a fourth the way down dude I gave but you an anyway. entire video but yeah so it's pretty people's consoles this is a pretty big fuck up and I mean it's nice for Sony to go okay everybody wants a refund for Anthem uh, yeah here take your refund just just just, just take your refund there's really not much they can do other than just off the refund unless the players can like irrevocably prove that yeah it was this game that caused their console to uh, get bricked but yeah, that's a bit of a mixed issue where Sony there's not a whole lot they can do. I guess they could occasionally, they could possibly send uh, people their comp some replacement consoles, but that's gonna be a bit hard because inevitably they're gonna not want to do it and do whatever they can to avoid doing that. But that's just Sony in general. Really, though, this problem—it's on EA. They need to. Uh, they need to get out a patch as soon as possible and uh, fix this problem. Because if they don't, well, bye-bye, Anthem, dead on arrival. But we come to expect this from EA. They never release working games on release. But I don't think it's ever been this bad. Oh, well, that's my say on it. You can do the other topics now. Okay. So next up was Captain Marvel. Yes. In this case, I think the mouse might be uh, telling Rotten Tomatoes, hey, stop letting people review bombs if they haven't even seen it yet. So the mouse is probably throwing around a bit of their weight, but that's not a bad thing, because this should be a thing. You shouldn't be able to review a movie until you've seen it. Though, I suppose there is also the critics who, uh, you know, get their, what, what's, it, what's it called, the, uh, Screeners copy, I think, is what they're called. Yeah, so they get the screeners copies and they can see the movie before everyone else. But for 
for sites like Rotten Tomatoes, uh, I'm not sure they how many of them are like people who get screener copies for the movies and stuff. So leaving it for say the audience, uh, there uh, that's that's what I call Rotten Tomatoes as an audience score and a critic score. And, well, the audience score, I think, is normally locked until the movie's release. So I, I'm i not sure. Because, you know, why would this be happening if that was actually true? But to be fair, I'm not going to sit up here and tell you I frequent that site. So you could be absolutely right. And in that case, I apologize. Oh shit, did I cut his mic? Oh, oh, oh no, you just no, get... No, no, I'm here. Okay. But, uh... Ah, yes. Uh, looking at a couple other movies that are on, on Rotten Tomatoes that have yet to come out, it looks like the uh, audience score, at least, is unavailable yet. But the reviewers, like the, you know, the more professional reviewers, are able to review movies before their release date. So I would assume, no, let me correct that. I would hope Rotten Tomatoes would only have people who would have screeners copies of the movie being able to review it. But I get the feeling in this case that, uh, to do with the quality of the movie itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's stupid. Agreed. So, but at the same time, though, assuming Rotten Tomatoes, all these uh, reviewers saw a legit, you know, reviewer's copy, then, well, at that point, all people I'm really chalk it up to is these reviewers are being shit reviewers. But if they're judging it based on not having seen it and er, controversy, er, feminism, then, um, okay? Yeah, no, shut up. Your review, your review shouldn't count unless you've seen it. Let's see here, then the next topic, the buyer beware culture. So there's at, there's actually one site I know of, at least with regards to uh, PC parts and the like, that's, that's pretty much trustworthy. It's a little place called uh, Tom's Hardware. And people are pretty, uh, what's the word, um, people aren't, uh, paid off there to say something nice about a product and, uh, lie about it. So, for PC at least, that site's actually pretty good. But, as for various other products, like, say, I don't know, uh, certain power tools, uh, Accessories for console for game consoles, or uh, even you know uh, stuff for what's it uh, your like home stereo system. I'm not really sure of any particular place, but I'm willing to bet that such a place would probably exist. At least 
least for you know the extremely popular pieces of technology that we got around, uh, you know, aside from computers and stuff. I guess it'd be a matter of look around hard. But as for the other part of the, and arguably more important part of the question of the conglomerates and corporations uh, basically silencing any dissent, well, I'm not sure there's much we can really do about that other than maybe laws to make it illegal. Uh, that's a little too hopeful right there. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go any further with that thought. And, well, just, uh, for some cases, I believe it's specifically with regards to Apple. There's a whole bunch of various, uh, like, non-Apple-affiliated computer repair shops that are willing to do repairs for, you know, Apple, uh, devices and the like. And, what, you you were going to say something? Yeah, I was just going to mention, you know, it's been a long time, like, I think over two years, but we did talk about it. What had happened was, why does that always sound weird to say? What had happened was, long story short, Apple and a bunch of other companies had tried to go to court and sue people who modify or repair equipment instead of just saying your your warranty is voided. And the problem is, is that uh, other big corporations jumped in on that bullshit on the opposite side saying, nah, fuck you. And in some countries and in some states, they basically told Apple that what they were trying to do was unlawful. But the problem is, is that, you know, it wasn't on the federal level. So it's, it's a bunch of stupid bullshit. They basically don't want people to realize how cheap it is to fix their shit and how much extra money they get off. And it, it, it annoys the fuck out of me. And I suppose in, in those cases, be aware methods that you can use to repair your um, your various technological devices, be they phones, computers, or tablets and the like. Be aware that, yeah, there are probably places that are more local and likely a lot cheaper than going to the manufacturer itself that could very well end up repairing your uh, devices just like that. But at the same time, I can see why people might be unwilling to do that as, well, sometimes you might take it to uh, someone to get it repaired and maybe they don't repair it properly. A lot of that comes down to trust and knowing who to go to, which... I would say if they have a license, but yeah. Well, even those who are licensed can still end up messing it up too. True, but then they have to fix it for free. Uh, I guess you got a point there, yeah. So, take it to licensed professionals and hope for the best. At least if uh, you get a product that you think is, you know, defective, which, well, I'm pretty sure there's a decent number of, if you look around enough on the internet, you'll probably find some sites that are not paid off by the corporations and they're going to tell you, oh, yeah, this thing, yeah, it's a piece of shit. It's a really badly designed garbage. Damn. So, let's see here. Devil May Cry. Is that... Oh yeah. Next up then is Don't My Cry. Yes, it's in the the image. Yeah, I'm looking at that now. Right. Okay. Well, I think Virgil is going to be like maybe 
the second to final boss. And they're going to include a playable Virgil as DLC. At least that's my prediction. I Okay, Corey, go next, and please, please don't screw this up. Okay, uh, well, I think that Anthem is fucked at the moment. They definitely need to patch the shit out of that. Um, I think EA is definitely, well, Sony's being at least kind and, you know, giving people refunds. It's not, it should be EA doing that, but, um, what else? Shit, they need That's to fix really them damn right systems. What's that? Oh, yeah, the breaking down that. I think it would be nice of EA to, you know, give the players a new console. I, I think that's on them uh, for releasing a broken game. Uh, I think Matt said it best. Uh, topic two, I think that Disney probably paid Rotten Tomatoes, but maybe part of them was kind of like, yeah, it's... it's Okay, we should have done this a long fucking time ago. It's time to change the way things are currently. Um, because that shit needs to change. Uh, topic three. Oh, uh, to, uh, the topic three was about um, places that get criticism on stuff, right? Did you do the Captain Marvel topic? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's the consumer shit. Honestly, I trust word of mouth, like, from friends more than I trust stuff from the internet. Motherfucker, you the only so one. So that's where I kind of, like, judge fucking my, with that shit. my opinion and get that kind of stuff from. Uh, yeah, I, I, I trust friends more than the internet. Um, and Devil May Cry, the last topic, topic, uh, topic four, um, Okay, I think Virgil is going to be the tutorial, because if we see it, the first trailer, he's the one that's ripping off Nero's arm. If that's not just a cutscene, I think it's going to be the tutorial. It's just a cutscene. Um, I think that he'd probably be another boss, and I think when Bloody Palace comes out, they'll make Virgil like a playable DLC character. Oh my god, I'm mad I didn't think of that. That's some epic shit. I am yeah, mad I didn't think of that. I think maybe. You know, I I'd think, say think anti-hero. Yeah, that's, well, yeah. Anti-hero is probably the closest of the anti-hero. Yeah, it's the closest of the anti-hero. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> Literally one of the coolest piece of shits in gaming. He's a total asshole, but everyone fucking loves him. Hashtag Cartman effect. Hashtag Virgil can go fuck himself in NPC3. Ah, the hate. It's still around. The hate. Yo, he's still fucking... Ah, uh, he's fun to play, but I hate going against Virgil's... Because he can kill you in yeah. one combo off of almost any button press on the fucking controller. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part is that even if you aren't good enough to do that, the game lets you get away with it because there's a fucking glitch they never got rid of. I'm not going to talk about it here because, hey, I know people don't play that game a lot, but let's be real. Somebody still out there would abuse this shit and I'll tell you about it later. Let's just say it involves DT. Okay. EA. I'm sorry, not really, but Daddy need to put you over his knee real quick. Now go get my switch, boy. How the fuck, you know damn well for a fact, you're producing games at such a rate that you make people want to quit the game before they even fucking go a whole month into development. You spend six years on a game that you don't want to keep in the oven correctly and coherently. You have, you make billions of dollars. You dodge hundreds of millions of taxes. How in the fuck? Did you just decide your new IP 
has to come out looking like that. This is the prime example why games as a service for the whole industry is fucking stupid. The only people that believe it, idiots who are trying to suck, who milk the udder of their overlord corporate masters, and by which I mean the, you know, stockholders. The people that don't play games. You see, you see, you see the irony of this, right? You make a product, but instead of listening to the people who buy your product, you listen to the bitches who don't. Hey, Corey, I've never been a white person. So if I told you, hey, it's a good idea to go to the beach in a hundred degree weather, you don't need any type of protection from the sun, fuck an umbrella. Do I sound like a smart person? And you know why? Because I've never lived a day in your shoes. I've never been white. Michael Jackson has, but I can't ask him shit because he's dead. And he's not coming back from the dead. Don't make that pun or joke. Well, no, this obviously is So let me tell you this, EA. You out here breaking motherfucker shit, acting like you ain't never heard of a joint lawsuit or a joint suit let me just break it down for you real quick it's when a group of people decide to say fuck you pay me because you did wrong instead of fuck you pay me because they you provided a service or they provided you a service so instead of you know spending money and time settling out of court all you got to do is a pay to get everybody's playstation sent to you and then send them to Sony to get fixed or B shut the fuck up. Give everyone the full retail value of their version of the PlayStation four. Maybe tell them mail you in their old ones. So they know they don't get ripped off because you know, if there's one person and entity, I'm not going to feel bad about being ripped off. It's a company that tax evades, but you didn't hear that from me or, you know, a company that tries to legalize tax evasion. Now, go put that switch back, boy. Sony? Sony, you get the slipper. You're less at fault, but you need to not bullshit. You know, you know for a fact, your shit's getting bricked. You need to call EA up that same fucking day and tell them how you going to fix this shit. You are a grown ass adult and you let these little EA kids run around like they baby's kids. Old reference for you. I know y'all ain't seen the movie. Don't worry. But basically baby's. Yeah, but we're old. Basically baby's kids is some old is some a nickname for anybody who has badass kids who go out of their way to disrespect adults. You are a billion dollar company and you're letting a little bitch ass company who claims that they don't really need you and they're self-sustaining make you look bad. All I can say is a refund don't mean shit. I would purposely kill their servers until they rectify the problem. You'll never see them move faster. Ooh, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah, that's why I said it. If they're allowed to do it, at least. Fuck you mean? It's they systems. They can block access to anything. Oh, well, sure. You ain't see what they did to them hackers last week. The only reason we ain't talking about it is because there's nothing to say about it. They fucked with hackers because hackers fuck with them. It's too simple. Okay. Now the elephant in the room. I think the House of Mouse did step in. But I stress the term think I haven't had it verified because see, here's something you guys need to remember. Corporate interest 
can assign dummies. They can assign uh, secret agents, corporate spies to go and invest money into a company just to get enough of a controlling share to make them do what they want to do if they won't do it the normal way. Alternatively, they could just bribe Rotten Tomatoes or they could flat out buy them or threaten some type of legal action. Whatever happened, I think it involves Disney putting the ever living fear of Rotten Tomatoes, I mean, ever living fear of Mickey Mouse's penis inside Rotten Tomatoes. Get that image out of your head. Good luck. Because this is a company that besides becoming one of the biggest and most not trusted, but most used, utilized English review sites in the whole goddamn country, the whole country made it do something it hasn't done in its what damn near 10 years of existence somebody google how old rotten tomato is one day so i'm not gonna sit up here and tell you they did wrong by making sure people can't review something until they've seen it or it's already come out but at the same time the fact that they waited till now makes everybody's spider sense tingle. But in a good way, though. So this is one of the only times I'm going to agree with corporate manipulation. Correction, Rotten Tomatoes is 20 years old. So they really fucking knew better. This company came out when I was fucking nine. That's crazy. Okay, so that kind of leads us directly into our next topic, both metaphorically and literally. Consumer concern. I think that's what I'm going to call this. Consumer concern, or CC for short. Look, I don't know about you, but this has been something that's existed since more than one person can buy an item. You can apply it to anything from vehicles to shoes to restaurants. If you buy something, if you legit buy something, somebody just leave a message, yeah. and you know somebody else is about to buy something, and you know it's a hot ass, steamy piece of bullshit ass garbage, I don't understand why society's decided you should be punished for warning them. You didn't slap it out of their hand, you didn't destroy the product in front of them so they can't fuck with it. You just said, hey, that's probably not a good idea. If I tell Corey, damn it, he's too tall. He's too much taller than me. He should chop both his legs off with an axe at the kneecap so I can be taller than him and stay that way for the rest of my life by throwing his legs in a wood chipper. And you stop him? Why should you be punished? Why me? Because you're taller than me. I just said it, God damn it. So anyways... Basically, the way I'm looking at it, I think that somebody in public relations or marketing is flexing company power or utilizing company power to do shady shit. Because see, here's the thing about a company, besides the fact that it makes absolutely no sense that a company can get the same rights as a human fucking being. At no point in time, at no point in time should somebody be allowed to basically harass and bully on the internet or in real life or in their emails and private communications for not liking how a product that came out in a shitty manner is and tells people. Last I checked, we officially made cyberbullying and revenge sex tapes illegal in the state of Illinois. And I think cyberbullying, you know, it became, it's, it, and it almost became illegal on the federal level at one point. So tell me why nobody's thought to sue these goddamn companies for going and telling YouTube constant ID this guy, constant ID that guy. Not because they did something wrong. They even have to put up the actual law that allows them to do critiques and reviews and comparisons in their videos now 
before they even get to the actual content. It's fucking stupid. And it'll happen even if they don't use their footage. Think I'm joking? Look up a guy named uh, Jimquisition. This man gives unbiased opinions of the video game industry of which he is a part of, as well as blowing the lids off of situations going on in big name companies by getting private information, not illegally, but by talking to employees that give him private information about what goes on behind the scenes. And everybody and their mom try to content ID him, even if he gives the game a positive review, because a good portion of the industry has decided he's a blacklist. So don't tell me this shit ain't happening. But as far as safe spaces, it's going to sound very, very dorky and cliche, but I would say Facebook and Vimeo. And I'm going to tell you why. Facebook doesn't have the same type of content ID algorithm as YouTube. Theirs works faster, but it's not the same. So if you create new media and new content, you good. However, this is Facebook. They're barely even set up for a gaming, a game streaming service. People, a lot of people forget that they even have it. Even I, I was at E3 and Facebook has so much money. Shit you not. The front door entrance, the very first thing you see is the Facebook gaming and streaming lounge. And I still forget on the last day walking out the door. Oh shit, that's right. Facebook has a streaming, game streaming. Sorry, I uh, had to cancel a phone call. So basically, outside of Vimeo, which no one remembers, the only other place I can think of is possibly, fuck. Damn, there's so few places, shit. I would say possibly Game Facts. However, you would have to immediately provide a link to your review and also SoundCloud. That's what it was. And I know that sounds weird, but let me tell you why. Because SoundCloud's content ID has no ability to harm or affect a review. No ability whatsoever. So if you do a written review, which is how a lot of people saw their reviews back in the day, because, you know, magazines cost money on Game Facts, it'll stay up there indefinitely. Nobody can fuck with it. But if you know people won't listen, you can do a small grading average for the game on YouTube. Make like seriously less than 60 seconds. And if they want the full video or the full story, tell them, hey, here's a link to my SoundCloud audio. Of course, you'll be paying like I think it's nine bucks or eight bucks a month to utilize uh, SoundCloud upload and storage. So basically, that's it. Word of mouth, and I stress the term in my opinion, word of mouth is 50-50. Even if you like the person and they don't have a biased opinion, I'm going to tell you why. Because some people only come, hey, can somebody go down there and tell them what's happening right now? Some people will only play a game because they came looking for one thing and they will ignore everything else that's wrong. And that's wrong. And to give somebody or claim you're giving somebody an unbiased opinion that's total bullshit when you are incapable of doing it. So all bullshit aside, and this is just for an example, everyone in here can name some overzealous fangirl who's obsessed with Kingdom Hearts and think they can do no wrong. Seriously, is everybody playing D&D? Holy shit. That's like the fourth person now. No, nah, I'm not mad. It's just... It's just a matter of, I, I had no fucking idea. Corey, I can see that happening. Matt, it's basically destiny. 
fucking Haven. Nope, didn't see that coming in the slightest. So, yes. So, if you talk to that fangirl, nothing has ever ter- been terrible or made no sense in Kingdom Hearts. They will not give you an unbiased opinion. Some people don't care if they don't give you an unbiased opinion. They care if you if they can manipulate you. And you're not going to know or be able to understand or trust their opinion if they're your friend necessarily. In fact, it may it may alter the relationship and not, not necessarily in a negative way, but in more of a, a trust way. I can't trust you to give me a, a unbiased or open opinion on something. So how can I go to you for thing number two or three X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. Cause I can tell you right now, I like Ninja Gaiden games. I know I fucking shouldn't. All I'm doing is torturing my hands and my mind. But if somebody told me, Hey, I can't pick between Devil May Cry and Ninja Gaiden because I am capable of giving an unbiased opinion. I will almost every time tell people 99.9% of the time. Do you like having fun or are you looking for an extreme challenge? And more than likely, they're going to tell me fun and I'm going to tell them Devil May Cry. Because Ninja Gaiden will make you want to punch your goddamn TV and then laugh at you in your face when they tell you, bitch, this isn't even my final difficulty. How is that not a meme? That should be a meme. Bitch, this ain't even my final difficulty. That or my final difficulty is DLC. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's just stupid because then I'm not going to fucking buy it. Why would I torture myself? Get paid to torture myself? Hell no. Hey, Matt, here's ten. Here's $100 and everything I've owned. Why don't you punch me in the dick? Nah, fuck that. So, yeah. Uh, how long did this go for? Let me see. All right. With that being said, unless you guys got any last minute things y'all want to bullshit and talk about, this has been another exciting episode of Token Games Podcast. I will see you guys after Captain Marvel comes out. We may talk about it even if we don't review it just to see what happened and what could have gone better or what could have gone wrong. Take care.